Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a kick the ball animation. And I'm not going to be showing you how to film it. If you want to film it, my best advice is to use screen recording software because what we'll have to do is film this with the take recorder because we're going to be using in-game physics. And that's its own separate can of worms that I don't really want to get into during this video. But please stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to film this with the take recorder. And there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of quirks with doing that. And so it becomes easier just to film it with screen recording software. I don't know why Unreal Engine just doesn't have an option to film whatever's on the screen. And I know with Unreal Editor for Fortnite that you have to do screen recording software. There is no recording functions. There is no take recorder in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So that's what you have to do in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. But here they do have a take recorder, but there's issues with using it. To get started on this, you're going to need an animation, a kick the ball animation. So what I have, what you have to do is go to Mixamo and download a character in T-Pose and then download a kick the ball animation without the skin. And I've already done that, so, but I'll walk you through those steps from this point forward. So the first thing we gotta do is come into Windows, load layout, default editor, then we can go to the content drawer and dock in layout. We'll go to the content level folder here and I will show you a couple things that you might need to do that will help you with filming with the take recorder, but I won't finish that piece of it out completely. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our animations. We're gonna go to add, import to game. We'll go to download, and we're gonna go to the T-pose here, go open. We're gonna go to advance, and then we're gonna use the T-pose as the reference pose. We're gonna get a little error here. We can just dismiss all that, make this window a little bit bigger. Then we're gonna go ahead and import our animation. And I got the soccer penalty kick one. And we'll go open. And you'll see that it's tied to the T-pose skeleton. So our character is actually under the name of T-pose in here. Then what we can do is we can just go ahead and drag him onto the scene, put him there. And then we need to create a ball for him to kick. And that's real easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to Blueprint class. I'm going to actor. I'm going to call this BP underscore ball. And what's interesting about this and why we have to either film with screen recording software or the take recorder is that we're not actually going to be animating the ball. The ball is going to be self-animating and it's going to be using in-game physics. So all we're going to be animating is the character kicking the ball, but the ball itself will be animated through game physics. Once you go into the game mode to animate the physics, you can't film with the sequencer anymore and you have to use the take recorder or screen recording software, which is what I would recommend to do. So anyway, we're going to double click into this and go ahead and dock this up top. We're going to add a static mesh. We're going to get an arcade sphere. And this is going to be, if I zoom out, it's way too big. And we're just going to go to scale and type in 0 0.08, tab 0 0.08, tab 0 0.08. And that's roughly the size of a soccer ball. And that's all we have to do in here and compile and save, except we do one last thing. I'm sorry. We do need to simulate physics on that because that's what's going to create our animation. So when he kicks it, the great thing about this is that the ball is going to move very naturally and look very realistic because it's animated by physics, not us. So now we're going to come back in here and get our BP ball and then just drag this onto the scene like that. Then we're going to animate the character through the level sequence. And so to do that, we could just create a montage as well or play an animation sequence, but I'm just going to do it through the sequencer. So we're going to right click here and go to cinematics level sequence and double click this. And with our character selected, I'll hit F to get down there a little bit. We're going to go add our character to the sequencer, then we don't need the transform track, so we're just going to go ahead and delete it. And now I should be able to go get that penalty kick animation. Now we'll, I'm going to slow my camera down a little bit here and come down here like this. 
and I have done this several times already so I know this ball needs to be further away from his foot now what we can do is just drag the playhead here and see right about where his foot would make impact I'm really off here so let's get down here and take a look at that again drag it back once you get drag the playhead it's probably best just to use this frame by frame control so you see right there he's really kicking it so where does he make initial contact probably right there so with my ball selected this is similar to the other tutorial I did we just have to get down here and put it as close as we can to things without it colliding overly overlapping other materials and things like that. The other thing we need to probably do is turn off snapping because it makes it hard to get fine control with snapping on. So we're getting there. This just takes a minute to do. Just use your judgment on this. But I will say have, after having done this a few times that make sure that make sure that this ball is not in the way of this other foot here because if it is it goes in a in a weird direction so let's see are we there yet see we don't want it colliding that much i kind of just keep an eye on that yellow line i think that looks pretty good and just make sure it's not off the ground right there look good i think that's pretty good Okay, I think that's good enough. Maybe come up with a hair here. Okay, that's good enough for me. So now, if we hit play, we come down here to the beginning of our track. Now, you notice this is way too long of an atom. So we're going to drag our end play marker here to, let's say, the 45th frame. And I'm kind of doing that on purpose. So this looks like the 44th frame. That looks like right at the end. So let's hit play and see what happens. There's our animation, but you'll notice that the ball doesn't move. And that's because we haven't simulated the physics yet. But when we turn the game on, then we're going to be in the third person player, which is way over here. He's going to come in way over here. So we've only got one shot at kicking this ball. So... So we need to see it right right away. We need to position ourselves over here where we can see it. And actually, that's one thing we can do right now is just put our player start. You can actually think of your player start in a certain sense as your initial camera position. So let's just put this player start kind of where we think the camera would be because that's where our third person player is going to come in. Okay, so now to film this, and this is kind of prepping, we basically have our... So if I hit... Let me do this. Let's go into, let's save this. Let's click in here and save that. And now if I drag this into the scene, the level sequence, right? And then I hit, well, I, I, can, I have to put it on autoplay, right? If I hit play, we should see the him kick the ball. See? Now, you notice, did you see how he jumped back? Now, once the animation is over, you see how he jumped back into this T-pose? So what we can do for that is, let me double-click and go into the sequencer. Click here on the animation, right-click, go to Properties. When finished, put Keep State there. So let's hit Play again and see how he stays in his position. Now, the only issue is that you know, is filming this now. And there's issues with doing that. So what I'm going to show you now is kind of prepping you for how you could film with the take recorder. But if we just wanted to film this with screen recording software, we still probably need to get rid of this this character, right? Because he's, he's in the way, right? He's going to be in our way. The other thing we can do is we can try to finagle things. Like, we don't want this uh, sequence to be on autoplay because we want to be in control of it. So one thing I noticed is that if you're having problems moving around in the scenes, just close out of the sequencer sometimes because it takes control of everything and it ends up muddling things up.
what I want to do now is I want to go into the third person template. Is that what it, oh, you know what I want to do is go into the, I'm sorry about that. Let me go into the new level sequence. Actually, I closed, I just finished closing it. Now I need it, but let's just turn off autoplay and don't loop because we want to be able to trigger this thing. So, so basically we have our animation and we're, I'm just setting, prepping things up for you to be able to record this now. And that's either with screen recording software, which I would recommend, or the take recorder, which I'll do a separate tutorial about, because that's a long one. And anyway, we go into open level blueprint. We have the these level sequence selected in the scene. So we're gonna go in here and go open level blueprint, right click, create a reference to it. And then we're gonna right click and get a keyboard event. So go keyboard event, and let's get something that's unusual, like a Z or something, because you don't want to pick something that might conflict with another shortcut. So then we're going to go ahead and drag off of here and go play sequence here, right there. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of prepping this that you could film this with screen recording software if you wanted. So we're going to come in here and I go play. I'm in the third person player character and I can kind of finagle my way around here. You see that? And I can kind of get myself in a relatively good position, but notice this player character is in the way of everything. So even if I want to record this with screen recording software, so like right now I can hit play, right? With Z, he's going to kick the ball. Great. But I can't really get a shot out of that because of this third person player character. So what we can do to rectify that, and this just takes a minute to do, it's not too much of a headache, is let me go back in here on the content level. We're going to right click and we are going to create a blueprint class and we're going to get a character class here. And I'm just going to call it my camera. And we're going to double click into it. And then we're going to come up here to add and we're going to look for a cine camera right there. And this can be repositioned. So I don't know how, how exactly we might want this, but let's put it like that. And so you might have to play with the position of this. Then let's go into our BP third person blueprint here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste all of this. Control C, come into my camera, go into the event graph here. We'll just delete all that and go Control V. Compile and save. And we don't get any errors. And we'll come back into the content level. And then we're going to go up here to Windows and we're going to go to World Settings. And we're going to change our game mode override here. Is it here? And change our default pawn class from that to my camera. And this will give us better control and get rid of the BP third person. Because I was trying to just move the BP third person camera and it, it just starts getting really, really weird. So now if I hit play, all I'm trying to do now is position my camera to see. And I can move around pretty well. I can go forward, backwards, and I might have to adjust the height of my camera, I see, but I don't have that, I don't have the third person player character in my way. So then if I hit F11, then I could turn on my screen recording software at this point, right? And go Z. And that would be my shot. Of course, it's a very short shot but that's my shot. And then I go escape. But now I can hit, I can hit Z again. Click, oh, I guess I gotta hit Alt P when I'm in this mode. Alt P to play. Then I can, like I said, you can change your position in here pretty well. So then if I like this position here, I turn on my screen recording software 
And then I just hit Z. Well, that was a, not a very good kick on his part. Let's see. Alt P again. Reposition myself. He He's not going to make it. <laughs> He'll try Z again. There we go. A little bit better. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. And like I said, if you have so inclined to subscribe, because I will be doing a tutorial on how to film this with the take recorder versus screen recording software. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.